today on Dr. Phil. A former UFC fighter arrested for allegedly beating his wife and sticking his dog on her. Did you send her text messages threatening to kill her and crush her throat? I can't comment on that. She defends her husband. You don't think he should be in jail? No. Has he threatened to kill you? Yeah, but I have too. Let's take a look at some of these text messages. I will choke you unconscious and smash your throat. Sorry. <laughs> I can't take it seriously. And the one person in her corner. He would have killed her that night if she hadn't left. Shut up. You're so annoying. She slams the hardest. This is the mother that's raising your children. Yeah, great for her. She's the one that took them from me. You're a disgusting person. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Do it, Dr. Phil. My guest today says she cannot imagine life without her husband, Josh. My husband, Josh, is the love of my life. I would describe Josh as a great father, a great husband, a caring person, and a hard worker. Josh is a really loving, sweet person. He sounds like a great guy, but I believe Caitlin is leaving out an important adjective, being abusive. At the age of 17, Caitlin's husband, Josh, was the youngest professional ultimate fighting championship fighter in his state. Four UFC fights in under a minute and became so popular that he was even turned into an animated character in a video game. But he recently made news headlines for a fight that had nothing to do with the UFC. A former UFC fighter arrested twice over a four-day span for allegedly beating his wife and sticking his dog on her. Caitlin was afraid to go to police before because Joshua threatened to kill her and her family. Text messages in the report show multiple death threats made to Caitlin from Joshua. Risby was first arrested on August 1st. He was charged with domestic assault and battery and two counts of improper storage of firearms. Later on August 4th, police returned to the home after Caitlin ran to a neighbor's house saying Joshua had repeatedly hit her in the head, punched in the side of her vehicle, and commanded their dog to attack her. Josh is awaiting trial on charges of assault and battery, uh, drugs, animal cruelty, and even threat to commit murder. Now, I plan to speak to him today in an exclusive interview, but first, I want to speak to his wife, Caitlin. She says she's planning to stand by him no matter what. She says Josh doesn't deserve to be in jail over what she calls trumped-up charges. She claims he's just being made an example of because of his fame. My husband, Josh, does not belong in jail. He's not normal, but he's, he's safe to be outside. The police are trying to blow on a portion of family fight because Josh is with the UFC. The first times that we started getting physical were actually my fault. I pushed Josh into getting really angry because I would not stop talking. When Josh hit me, I did end up with a black eye and a bloody lip. My mom got some photos of me when I was hit. My mom went to the police station and showed them pictures and took it upon themselves to have police come to my house. Even though I didn't want Josh arrested, Josh was held in jail for a few hours. Then, the next night, we got in an argument. I went and hid in bushes, and finally he found me, and he just told me to go in. When I went in the bathroom, he busted open the door and he did hit me in the head a few times. And during that time, my dog, Buddy, was running around like a little kid, got in the middle of it. Buddy bit me on my right leg, and Josh grabbed him by his choke collar. And when Buddy was being put back in his cage, I decided to run to my neighbor's house, and she ended up calling the cops. Well, that neighbor that she ran to did call 911, but Caitlin says it's her mom's fault that Josh is in jail. It's not Josh's fault, it's her mother's fault. My mom is a meddling, manipulative liar. 
you stole my kids. I only went to get custody of the children because Caitlin refused to continue her restraining order against Josh. I'm protecting the children. My mom has made up lies about Josh being violent with me. I saw her physically hurt. She ran to neighbor's house. The neighbor called me immediately. Her hair was all disheveled up from having been pulled by her head. She had been punched so many times all over her body, smashed on the marble floor. Her wrist was kind of dangling and broken, and she had blood on her buttocks area. She's delusional that this never happened. Caitlin is totally obsessed with Josh, like a Charlie Manson woman. She's still being controlled by Josh, even though that he's behind bars. All right, I, I, I'm glad you're here because I want to have an opportunity to talk to you about what's going on, and I want you to have an opportunity to say what you think has mm -hmm. gone wrong here with regard to Josh. Because yeah. you don't think he should be in jail. No. Okay, no. now these pictures that we have seen, mm -hmm. this man is, is a trained professional fighter, mm -hmm. and he has punched <laughs> you in the face and in the lip. You've got knots on your head. You've had to run and hide in the bushes. A lot of it has to do with alcohol, too. OK, I, I, we'll talk about yes. why in a minute. But I just want to be sure that we're clear. Mm -hmm. This has been inflicted upon you by him. Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. If you weren't afraid of being uh, killed, why did you run? I ran because I just wanted to defuse the situation. Like and you think that he could kill her? He would have killed her that night if no, she hadn't left. Have. He would have killed her if she had not left. Because you were there, right? Absolutely. And why do you think that? Mm. I was there. I was called by the neighbor. Um, as soon as she called the police, I was the next phone call. Um, I lived 10 minutes away. We got there, um, and her arm was dangled. Her My hair was all was up in the air. She was oh. um, swollen, very swollen. Was swollen, too, really. It says minor injury. <clears throat> And she was saying, never again, never again. I should have listened mm -hmm. to you guys. He was going to kill me. He was going to kill me. Mm -hmm. Has he threatened to kill you? Yeah, but like, you know, my thing, I have, I have too. Like, I have said those things too. Like, you know, you get angry. You guys are just talking over text message. Like, it's not a, I've said it too. It is a big deal, Caitlin. Well, but it, he, he didn't say this in terms like, oh, I could just kill you, mm -hmm. right? He said it very specifically and graphically in text messages to you, correct? Yeah, and how he was going to okay, do it. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of these text messages. <laughs> You're blanking dead. And if you even try to bring my kids into it, the worse it will be for you. And if you try to make a scene, I will choke you unconscious and smash your throat. And if you get worse and run around after, I'm going to let Buddy have at you. Buddy is your pit bull. My Staffordshire Bull Terrier. OK, I will let Buddy have at you, and I will walk out of the room. You better not be bluffing about cops, because I don't joke. You're dead when I see you, literally. I don't care. I'm going to beat you and throw you to Buddy. You're dead. I'm not e even reading your blank. Because the next step is me coming up and beating you senseless. That's all you think about, your blank scumbag piece of <laughs> who I'm going to enjoy choking to death. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't take it seriously because I know that he's like, he's drinking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Drinking doesn't make you do that, Dr. Phil. Oh, shut up. Dramatic over here. In terms of the police reports, mm -hmm. uh, an incident on August 4th of, of this year, mm -hmm. it says Josh was yelling at her to get in the blanking house. Mm -hmm. Caitlin said she ran down the street, hid under the bush, and Josh yeah. found her. Mm -hmm. Josh then began punching her in the head and forced her into their home. That is not true. Oh, you were there, right? No, I'm reading from the police report. Yeah, but she shaking her head like she was there. No, you weren't there. Well, were you there? I was there. Well, who told this to the police? She um, did. No, no, I did not. Um, a lot of the stuff on the police report is <laughs> sorry. Uh, Josh got her inside the house and kept punching and kicking He's her never over and over. Me. Josh was yelling at her, you want me to blank and kill you? never said that either. Josh also told her that he is going to get someone to kill her father. 
No. Caitlin was on the ground and he pulled her by her hair. Josh kept punching her everywhere and she made it into the bathroom. Caitlin said yeah. she pretended to go to the bathroom yeah. and had her phone, but then Josh made the dog, Buddy, sick her. Oh, yeah. we can talk and the dog too. bit her behind her right thigh, puncturing the skin. Oh, yeah. Dr. Phil, I was doing yeah. that was stated by her. No, you at her oh, friend's house. I know, house. right? Because I was in the ambulance pretty much the whole time. No, you were on the couch, Caitlin. Did that happen? What part? Because there was so much on there. Like, uh, no, he never dragged me in by my hair. No, he never kicked me. He well, never well, had my dog sick me. Come on. That well, just sounds well, crazy. Let's take a quick break. Coming up, Josh is going to join us on the phone from jail. He's never spoken out publicly before today. I'm curious what he's going to say happened that night. We'll find out right after the break. Did you abuse your wife physically? No. If a woman had been beaten and made excuses, would those be valid excuses? Uh, yeah. And later... Let me speak. Shut up. You're a disgusting person. You want to know why? Because you're a liar. One for Be you, quiet. one for her. No. Now. No, I'm not going to be My mother-in-law is the one who called the cops on me. She is trying to take my children from me because she has some sort of control issue. My mother-in-law is trying to ruin my reputation. It doesn't make me look like I'm a violent person because I, I'm a professional. So it looks like I, I like to hit and beat up people. My mother-in-law is trying to ruin my life. All right, Caitlin and her husband recently made news headlines after he was arrested for assaulting her on two separate occasions over one weekend. Now, despite suffering bruises, bloody noses, and baseball-sized bumps on her head, Caitlin says she is standing by her man and has no plans for divorce. Now, today in an exclusive interview, Josh is calling in from jail. Josh, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Did you abuse your wife physically? No. Okay. We, we have pictures here of her split lip, bloody face, black eye, a knot on her head, uh, scratches yes. and bruises. Who did that to her? Uh, I can't really talk about that. I have an open case right now, so I can't really get into that. You can't really answer my questions because this phone call is probably being recorded at the jail and yes. you don't want to incriminate yourself on the phone. Correct. All right, well, let's talk about it hypothetically then. If someone did, in fact, inflict those kind of injuries on his wife, would you consider that to be inappropriate? Of course, yes. Here's what Caitlin had to say about the behavior that you do not admit to. We want to be clear on that. She says the reason that you hypothetically or allegedly did what you did Quote, I wouldn't sh
shut up. They're trying to make an example out of him because he's high profile. There's only so much a person can take, which means you badgered him because you're Italian, mm -hmm. you said, because you're a loudmouth yeah. Italian. Yeah. Uh, do you know how many women in town have been hit by their husbands? Tons. I'm a mouthy woman, don't know when to shut up. He only hit me when I wouldn't walk away. I pushed him to get really angry. So it, let, let's, let's, again, take this out of your case. If, if a woman had been beaten and abused by someone and made those excuses, would those be valid excuses? Uh, yeah. So you would say that if if a woman provoked I mean, it, takes two. it takes two though it takes two I mean I, I don't I, I'm not you know what I mean me and my wife have known each other for our whole lives I mean we've been dating since we've been uh, 13 you know and you know maybe we got we got too comfortable. Let me ask you this and again we're not talking about your situation here we're just right. talking about this hypothetically yeah. and conceptually. Uh, yeah. Do do you feel that? If a woman provokes a man and he hits her, then she got what she asked for. No, I, I don't. I, I believe that um, that the husband should have self-control. Should she, you know, be able to control himself or, or leave the situation? Do you believe there's any situation or circumstance in which a man should ever put his hands on a woman in anger? Uh, no. Did you send her? Text messages threatening to kill her and crush her throat? Um, I can't comment on that. Uh, if you did, would that be wrong? Yes. That'd be so wrong. You know, I mean, it'd be, if I ever did say something like that, it'd be in the heat of an argument and just being stupid. Mm hmm. Uh, let me ask you this. If someone, again, just hypothetically, yeah. let's say someone is abusing alcohol and or drugs and gets into a rage, attacks their wife physically and beats her bloody, threatens to choke her to death, crush her neck, uh, sick a dog on her, kill her family members, whatever. If somebody did, in fact, do it just hypothetically, if somebody did that and then they didn't get any kind of professional help before those behaviors and threats and returning back into that same situation, do you think you would predict that it would blow up again if nothing happened in between in terms of professional help to help that person learn to express themselves better? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I don't think it went to the extreme, but I think you know, hypothetically, I think yeah, that, that, that you know we need we need help. Your best action might be a mea culpa. That your best action might be to man up, stand up, own what you have done, get professional help, and then ask the court to give you an opportunity to rehabilitate yourself rather than saying you didn't do it. Yeah. Caitlin, is there anything you'd like to say to Josh before we let him go? Love you. <laughs> no, I love you too, babe. Do you want him to get professional help? We both need help. Yeah, I would like to, I would like to, I'd like to be, um, you know, have counsel with my wife. Me and my wife were planning on doing this. Josh, thank you. Yep, sorry. Uh, next, we're going to talk about why Caitlin says her house is haunted, and that may explain Josh's behavior. We'll be right back. Josh had a good reason to hit me. I wouldn't stop talking about the ghost. Caitlin and her husband recently made news headlines after he was arrested for assaulting her on two separate occasions in one weekend. Now, despite suffering bruises, bloody nose, baseball-sized bumps on her head, Caitlin says 
She's standing by her man and has no plans for divorce. Now, Caitlin says Josh had a good reason to be upset with her, and it has to do with their house. When we bought the house, we weren't aware that it was haunted. First thing that I saw down here in the basement was a woman standing right there staring at me. One time, I would heard the voice tell me to get out. We found baby jars filled with hair that were labeled with names. There was about eight of them. That was just very strange and creepy. My son has been picked up in a scrub. Oh my god, what the f just happened? My son has seen someone. I showed him a picture of the guy that passed away in the house, and he said that that was him. There was a point in time where Josh's grandfather's bracelet went missing. When the bracelet went missing, I did bring up the fact that it possibly could be the ghost. We got in a big argument. Josh kept on telling me to ignore the house being haunted, and I couldn't. It became an obsession. Josh had a good reason to hit me. I wouldn't stop talking about the ghost. OK, so you believe that... Uh, I know my house is haunted. Your house is haunted. It is haunted. And what did this have with you getting the hell beat out of you? <laughs> I know, it's funny, right? No, I'm, I'm, that's not a smart no, aleck question. No, I'm, I'm asking like, seriously. Again, like, I'm asking that seriously. don't believe, like, you think it's funny. Um, honestly, what I thought maybe was that whoever died in my house was having an impact on my husband. OK. Because he was doing strange things that he usually wouldn't do. And he doesn't like hearing about it, though. Yes. So when you tell him about it, he wants you to shut up yeah, about it. Yeah, he said that, stop talking about it. Like, the more attention you give it, the more things happen, which it's true. And you said he started acting weird. Like sleeping on the floor uh, all of a sudden. November um, of 2013, after you moved into the new house. Yes. Something, I mean, it's like he went in there and got possessed or something yes. or influenced in some way. Yes, influenced in some way. Maybe not <clears throat> totally possessed, but something yeah. was there that maybe was influencing because this. Uh, Listen, I, I'm not making light of it. I'm, no, I want to know. know. I, I want to know. It's, it's funny to other people until you actually live it. Was he ever violent with you before that? Or did it start after you no, moved in the house? No, it started after we moved in the house. I mean, we've had arguments, like, but regular arguments, like yelling. But then when we moved in the house... It but he had never gotten physical before no, being in the house? No. Okay, and you said that it's kind of focused in, like, the bedroom and the basement? Yes. The stronger um, energy my there. My son was picked up. I left my son and my dog up in his room on the ground, and when my son was screaming for me, I ran up, and my son was back in his crib. So you think some... Something picked up my son? Something picked your son and put mm -hmm. him in the crib. Mm -hmm. uh, and you said your husband, Josh, started spending... More time in the basement. More time in the basement. Mm -hmm. I've been told by four mediums my, my basement of the house is um, a portal to hell. Do you consider any alternative explanations? <laughs> no. Like, I... Well, like you say, your husband started spending a mm. lot of time in the basement. And that's where the guy used to spend a lot of time that died in my house. But didn't they find drugs in the basement? Yes, they did. You mean my medical marijuana? <laughs> Medically? Had licenses? You mean that? The pot farm? And cocaine? Cocaine, I want to see evidence because I've asked for a picture or some sort that it was there because now they're trying to say that there was heroin inside the cocaine. Really? I understood that they found 15.9 grams yeah, I would of love cocaine to see that because I asked the officer and too. 20 marijuana plants. 20, yes, yeah, um, we're allowed to have marijuana plants. We have our medical marijuana license. When I say an alternative explanation, is it possible that maybe he was spending more time in the basement because that's where the drugs were? Uh, that makes no What? I, mean, I don't is, think it's funny at it, all. Is that, is that um, possible? No, well, I don't think it's it, possible. It's not, it's not funny in terms See, that's of... That's where he had all of his tools. That's it, where he was woodworking. It's not like, funny, ha-ha. It's funny in terms of being ridiculous. And yeah. I, I'm just trying to say, it, would you consider an alternative? No, I wouldn't. She loves to not let me speak, Dr. Phil, because she doesn't no. want you to hear the truth. No, 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 she no. no. Be quiet no. now. Let me say something to you here. Um, um, we've sp spent a lot of time on 
domestic violence over the years. You do consider yourself to be in a domestic violence situation, correct? Yeah. Mm, but I think there should be degrees of domestic violence. Like, my husband isn't like someone that's beaten him with a paddle like I've seen on one of your shows. These are just arguments that have gotten out of control. It ain't an everyday thing. It's not, my husband's not controlling. My husband doesn't check my phone. My, do, my husband doesn't stalk me. He lets me do what I want to do. These are just heated arguments that Kayla, have gotten, shut the up, I'm not done. Like, sh shut up. Kayla, be shut respectful. Your mouth. Shut your mouth. It's not true. Tell the truth. Okay. Dr. Phil, when she comes to my house, Shut she calls. up. You're so annoying. When she goes out, he's texting her. If she's really? going out with me, I text he's texting. Him. Where are you? When are you coming back? Are you serious? He goes to work and leaves, takes her car. Because we work. have one car. Okay. But... Okay, hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Listen, first off, you're on national television. Okay. Okay. Um... Okay, then I'll walk right off because I've said it. I'm done. So, you... Clean your mouth up. That's that's not too much to ask. Really? That's what I ask all the time, Doctor. Well, okay, you. you do. Like, all that's right. Why, you're, like, all right. you're right. I I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure you're right. But the point is, you're you're not only saying that here, but you're saying that to your mother. And by the way, this I is the mother like that's her. raising your children, right? Yeah, great for her. She's the one that took them from me. Doctor Phil. And I'm a great mom. And there's no doubt, Kate, you were a great mom. I am a great mom. No, you were a great. No, mom. I am a great mom. And you're allowing your children to witness? No, my kids were never around when that happened. The, never the, around. The kids were around the yelling and screaming. Really? You were there, and right? This Caitlin is what I mean. Admitted okay, How can someone police. say that? Instead someone... of being, look, instead of being sarcastic and smart mouthed about it, give me an honest answer. Have, have you and your husband been fighting in front of your children? No. They've never heard no. you guys yelling and no. screaming. No, no. So you have so much control, and he has so much control, that when the children are around, it's just this no is deal. Let's, when the drinking perhaps sats. let's talk about that later. Drinking sats. Okay. No, Dr. Phil, that's and do you not drink true. At really, home? you know, right? Because you were there, right? I, I think she does know. This is why my dad didn't come here. You I want to know why? Because he thinks she's crazy. No. I do know, Dr. Phil, I've been there, I've been called, I've taken the kids overnight. No, you have not. And then brought the kids back in the morning Jeez, to having a smashed chair on the ground. Really? And a one of the kids chair being the there and her in tears. What are you talking about? I have about? seen that stuff. Oh, where's I've your been evidence? in the house when he's where's sworn at her. Hey, where's your evidence? Let me speak. Shut up. Be you're quiet disgusting. and be... You're a disgusting person. You want to know why? Because you're a Go liar. Go ahead. She loves She's not going to let me speak, Dr. Phil, because she doesn't no. want you to hear the truth. No, 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 no. Speak, because I'm problem, problem, problem I got two ears, one for Be you, quiet. one for her. No. Now. No, I'm not going to talk. She is so disrespectful, Dr. Phil. This is a problem. A problem that my daughter was a good mom, OK? She is a good mom. But right now, she has gone through so much abuse that she can't admit the truth. That's the real reason that we're here today. I'm afraid for her life. I went there that night. I didn't go and take custody of her kids because I wanted to. I'm 52 years old. I've done this. I don't want to do it again, OK? I love my daughter, and I love her grandchildren. I want her to get the help she needs. She got an emergency restraining order and told the judge how abusive and showed all the pictures of bite marks on her chest and bruises and bite marks on her buttocks area and punches and, 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 and it's just horrible what we saw, the text messages that they took off of her phone. She made a statement to the police that night. That was August 1st. Mm -hmm. So August 4th, we were supposed to go to court. My husband goes to her house and he calls me and says, she's not answering the door and the car's here. I have to call the cops. She could be dead. We don't know. We're afraid. Caitlin, do you want to come? Didn't really want to, but have to. No, no, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. No, hold on. Caitlin, stop right where you are. What kind of show would it be without me? Uh, Caitlin wants to come back out. Didn't really want to, but have to. No, no, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. No, hold on. Caitlin, stop right where you are. 
You don't have to come back out here if you don't well, want to come back out here. I ain't going to let a bad mouth my whole family. But, so you do want to come back out here? Yeah, well, I, they told me, you know, calm down. Don't. No, you don't. Much, listen, no. we don't tell you what to, If you don't want to come back out here, don't come back. What you kind of come... show would it be without me, right? Pardon me? What kind of show would it be without me, right? Oh. I'm, sorry, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. What kind of show would it be without me? Great. Oh, we'd limp along somehow. I know, right? <laughs> Would you like to come back out? I'll come back out because I want to explain myself. Okay, come here. Yeah. Because I, 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 I... That's the thing. Like, I don't care what people think of me. That's the That's thing. okay. You like it? You don't? You should don't care. care what people think of you. I don't. Like, I don't give a... Um, <clears throat> can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you like getting hit? Does anyone? Yeah. There's people that like to be hit. Yeah. Oh, well, then they're sick. Okay, but you, you don't. No, you, I don't. You don't think you deserve to be hit? No, I don't think anyone deserves to be hit, and that's what okay. my husband said, too. Okay. Um, People make mistakes. Do okay. I judge anyone else's life? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe that what you want is to reconcile with your husband mm -hmm. and have a peaceful family unit. Mm -hmm. We take a lot of history about our people and find out what's going on with them. Um, and one of the things we found out is that from the very beginning that your children were born, that you have been a loving and your children's interest ahead of your own. And, it, and I always look for that because that's very important to me. And look, look at these beautiful children. Oh my gosh. These children are so great. And... The great world. Well, of course. And... You know, children... And people think like, oh, I just don't want to see them. No, no it hurts. No, no, it hurts no, no, no. a lot when your kid's at the window <clears throat> saying, Mama, please don't go. Please don't leave me. <clears throat> and, you, and you can't do anything because I can't take them home. <laughs> but, but listen to me. I, I want you to take them home. I, I want you to have what I was just saying to you. And I think you don't know how to get back to that at this point. I, I think your, your husband is not an evil guy. No, he's not. I think that sometimes when you get a lot of notoriety and a lot of success and then it slips away, it's a long way to fall. And for a guy, particularly a guy that's you know, really focused on being strong and tough and taking care of his family and all of that, and then that gets taken away, I, I think sometimes those people can panic yeah. and they can start to self-medicate. And you've said he can drink 30 beers, he can drink 30 beers uh, at a time. And I, I think there has been some drug involvement and we can be very vague about that because I'm trying I to get in trouble. I asked the officer if he thought that he was on any drugs. He said no. You're right. Okay. Let's, 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 yeah. I'm just telling you no, what I think. Fine. I'm just telling you what I think. Mm -hmm. I think that when stress goes up, domestic violence goes up. And I think that's happened here. Mm -hmm. And I think as a result, your, your husband is cracked under the pressure. Yeah. And I think he's vented that on you. And you know that deep down he's a good guy. Yes. And so you're trying to give him some cover and stand by your man in this dark time in his life. That's my analysis of the situation overall. How am I doing? What do you think? No, you're doing good. You, you think I get it? Yeah. Okay. Here's what I think needs to happen. Mm -hmm. If your husband doesn't get serious help, mm -hmm. he's going to kill you. Um, He's not going to mean to kill you, and he is going to feel so badly after he does. And he is going to miss you for the rest of his life as he sits in prison. We want to both get help. But he, no, listen to me. Mm -hmm. you, you, there, there's time to talk and time to listen. This man, in my opinion, as a professional who's been doing this for 35 years, mm -hmm. is going to kill you if something doesn't happen to give him better coping skills 
and a better way to handle the mm -hmm. stress that he's dealing with. And by you making excuses for him, you keep him from getting better. By you making excuses for him, you put yourself and your children's mother in harm's way. By you not having the courage to call a spade a spade, to say this is what this is, you risk your children growing up without their mother because she's dead and without their father because he's in prison. Now, I will get him the help as a gift from me to your family. I will get him the professional help to do that because I know it can be expensive. I know it can be difficult, but that's just my gift you. to you. I will help him. I will even have him tell the court that we have a plan for him, that we will work to get this done for him. But I can't do that around you. I have to do it with you. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you have to be honest with yourself and with me. If he has a problem with impulse control and rage, and he has attacked you and could have already killed you and will if something doesn't happen. Now, two things need to happen. Mm -hmm. He needs help to control that rage and learn to express himself. And you need help to realize that you deserve better than you're getting. Those two things can put your family back together. Failing those two things, it will never happen. All I want is my family. I don't care what I need to do to get my family back, but I need, I want my family. And we want you to have your family. And do you realize that you are, are taking a, a way that really is enabling him? I know. You need to decide that if this man wants to be in your life, he needs to earn the right to do it. And that you need, <laughs> you need to love yourself enough as a woman and as a mother of your children that you get treated better. Because if you're safe, they're safe. And if you're not safe, they're not safe. If I get you this help, will you take it? Mm -hmm. Not just for him, but for you. Yeah. Because let me tell you, there are problems with self-esteem and self-worth if, if that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. You have to love yourself before you can. And, and, and you can do that. I mean, Robin, you know, Robin has, this is my wife Robin, stand up Robin so she can see you. Her foundation When Georgia Smile focuses totally on domestic violence and all of this that happens in the home. She's, she's developed programs for this. She works with women along these lines each and every day. If you don't have the self-esteem and self-worth to require it, how often do you hear that from women that have been in this situation? Every time I talk to a woman who is either in, the, in this situation, uh, but always when I talk to a woman who has come out of the situation, she always tells me, I didn't think I deserved better. I thought I deserved being hit. I believed everything he told me. I believed him when he told me that I deserved to be hit, that I didn't deserve to be happy, that I didn't deserve to live a joy-filled life. And that's when I created When Georgia Smiled. That's why I wanted to create programs that would help advance women and children to live happy lives, to live joy-filled lives, and to know that they deserve to live those lives. And you deserve it. And you're, you're involved and have this network of counselors all over the country yes. that we work with and you work with. We can, we can get her the right help, right? Oh, yes. We can get you the help starting today. And I think you know you deserve it because you're, you are a good mother. And I know you would never do anything that would hurt your children. Ever, ever want to put them in harm's way. And so you're, you're already there. You're already starting that journey. And so it just takes you believing that for them to have a safe life, you need to be safe. You need to have a safe life. And we're, we're saying we're going to surround you with that help if you will take it for him and for you and then for you two as a couple and, and to put this family back together. Yeah. But you, you can't 
put yourself back in that situation without that in place or you're going to wind up dead. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. You'll take the help? Yeah. Deal? I want to thank all of my guests today. If you want more information about today's show, log on to DrPhil.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Woo!